Welcome to our presentation about Landmark Best Forest Search, a framework for landmarks in planning. My name is Clemens Büchner and this is joint work with Thomas Keller. We, all, we assume you all know quite a bit about classical planning, so let's jump right into an example. This box here, it has three lights on top of it. They are all turned off at the moment and our goal is to turn them all on. We can do so using the three buttons that are available here. The first one requires that A is turned off and it will turn on A when pressed. The second one has a precondition that A is turned on already and it will turn on B. The third one requires that B is turned on and it will turn on Z but at the same time turn off A. So how can we get all lights to be glowing. Well, it's not that hard. We just press the buttons in the order that I just explained them. So the first one adds A, second one adds B, the third one adds C, but at the same time turns off A, and then we turn on A again by pressing the first button. What about landmarks? Landmarks are things that must happen in all solutions. For example, here all lights A, B and C must glow. So they all are landmarks. We represent them in a landmark graph as the nodes. So there are the nodes A, B and C in that graph. Landmark orderings specify in which order that we can or should achieve these landmarks. For example, the second button tells us that we need to turn on A before we can turn on B, because A is a, gre a greedy necessary precondition for B. There are other ordering types, for example, reasonable orderings. This one can be justified by the third button, because wh whenever we turn on C, we also turn off A. So it would be reasonable to only turn on A after we have turned on C. We have seen though that this is not possible in this example. Still, the reasonable ordering is correct. Computing the landmark graph is only one of the components we have established in our landmark framework. The second, third and fourth progressing, merging, and extending the landmark graph, they all have to do with updating the information based on transitions between the different states during search. And the fifth one, exploring the state space, well, we usually do this uh, using some kind of landmark heuristic in our context. The time of this talk is not enough to explain all of these components in detail. So what we do in the remainder of the talk is focusing on progressing the landmark graph. While the notion of this framework is new, there are algorithms using landmarks that already implement it. And some of them are really famous examples. For example, you might have heard of the LMA star algorithm. So how does the, the landmark progression work in, this, in the case of our example? Well, the progression is shown here. So we see for each of the states the current landmark graph. And it is really easy to understand. For example, when A is turned on, that landmark is accepted. So we remove the node A from the landmark graph. Similarly, in states S2 and S3, we remove B and C respectively. Now in state S3, we realize that A is turned off here. So uh, it is added back as a landmark because it is one of the goal conditions. So wouldn't it be nice if we knew that A must be added also in states S1 and S2? And in fact, this information is actually already contained in the landmark graphs, in the, in the landmark graphs, in, in the form of the reasonable orderings. But the LMA star algorithm doesn't use that information. 
there is another example that uses it, and it is the famous Lama planning system. So what are the, uh, the differences between these two approaches? So they both have in common that they, know, they use the notion of required again landmarks. For example, as I've said before, goals that do not hold and also greedy really necessary preconditions of unaccepted landmarks, they are added back into the landmark graph to denote that we must uh, add that landmark again later. And now only the la Lama planner, uh, it does an additional thing. And this is not accepting landmarks that have unaccepted parrots. This is exactly what we wanted to with the, the reasonable ordering. So what does this look like in the example? Well, in stage one, where A is turned on, the light A is turned on, we keep A as a node in the landmark graph because the node A has an unaccepted parent C here. And so we just keep it. This is exactly what we wanted. However, in the state S2, there occurs a problem. And this is that now also the node B has an unaccepted parent. And even though this is the only time that we turn on B, this landmark is also not accepted at this point. So uh, this is really a problem because ultimately this, the, this means that in our goal state S4, there is a landmark uh, that, that is not actually a landmark. So the, the, this procedure of progressing the landmark graph, well, it is inadmissible. And while this is not necessarily a problem for, uh, for a satisfying planner like Lama, it certainly can't be used in an optimal setting for, uh, for, for optimal planning. Well, what is the underlying problem? The problem is that there is some sort of chain reaction of unaccepted landmarks. But we have identified a solution. Namely, we always accept the landmarks when they are first added. Instead of not accepting those with reasonable orderings, we just mark those as required again. So there is an additional state. Uh, there is an additional sort of information that we gather here. And what does this mean in the example? Well, in the in the status one, where A is already accepted but marked as required again, so it remains in the graph. But the ordering, the greedy necessary ordering that follows A, well, this is already satisfied basically, and therefore. B does not have unaccepted parents anymore in this graph. And so if we transition to S2, then we can immediately, immediately accept B. And with this, we have solved all the problems that arose before. We call this progression uh, strategy the admissible reasonable orders, or RO for short. Now, with this progression, where the landmarks are always admissible, we can use this in a cost optimal setting. And we have experimented with this by substituting uh, the RO progression uh, instead of the LMA star progression that I have explained before. And what we can observe here is that the amount of expanded states with this strategy is is lower, which is a good thing, of course. We always want to expand as few states as necessary. And we can also see here at the bottom row, basically, that in some cases, this even leads to perfect information in the landmark graph. So the, when we use this information for, for heuristics, then the heuristic is, uh, is perfect in these cases. We have also substituted RO in the satisfying planner Lama and have observed what happens there. Now, there it is not that easy to compare, for example, the number of expanded states or something like that. 
Instead, we focus on the plan quality here. And what this table shows us is that there were 103 instances where our RO method has found a cheaper plan, while LAMA has only found a cheaper plan in 98 instances out of over 2000. So the difference is, the difference actually isn't that big. But this is not important to us. We mainly want to show here that there is also no negative effect of substituting our admissible uh, approach to, to progressing the landmark graph. One more thing, LAMA requires that the landmark graph is acyclic. This is because um, cycles in the landmark graph, they basically result in, a, in an infinite chain of unaccepted landmarks. So all the landmarks in the cycle would never be accepted. This is of course, of course bad in, uh, because we want to accept, accept these landmarks and with RO, this is actually not a problem anymore. So we were wondering what happens if we don't turn off the cycles in the computation of the landmark graph. So what if we keep the cycles? And what we have found is that even more instances were, were found to have a cheaper plan than the, the original LAMA implementation. So cycles introduce additional information that is valuable here. Now, what do we want you to take home from this talk? First of all, reasonable orderings, they have valuable information that we can and should use when using landmarks for, for heuristic search. However, the LAMA progression is inadmissible. Luckily, we have shown that there is an admiss admissible alternative uh, which also performs well in both optimal and satisfying planning. Finally, there is a common misconception that cycles in landmark graphs are bad, but we show that this is not the case here. If you are interested in more about this topic of cycles in landmark graphs, please join our presentation at the main conferences where we exploit cyclic dependencies in landmark heuristics. Thanks for your attention.